Question 8 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student investigates light from a sodium vapour lamp. Sodium vapour lamps emit yellow light. The light from the lamp is passed through a collimator and the collimator is used to produce a parallel beam of light. And now apparatus is set up in a darkened laboratory. So there you have the sodium vapour lamp and it's attached to a clamp stand. You have the collimator which is right up against the exit hole of the sodium vapour lamp. And that will collimate the light which means produce it into a sort of, kind of parallel beam for display on the screen. So let's slide down and see what the question is going to test us on. Part A says the parallel beam is shown onto the screen. The distance between the end of the collimator and the screen is 0 0.40 metres. And the beam produces a uniformly lit spot of radius 15 times 10 to minus 3 metres as shown. So you can see the, the spot of the light beam on the screen and you're given its radius there. Now question 8 part A will ask us in part I the irradiance of the spot of light on the screen is given as 17 watts per metre squared. And for 4 marks we have to determine the power of the beam of light. We'll look up a relationship sheet and we know that the irradiance is going to be equal to the power of the light source divided by the area. If we cross multiply we can find out the power is. Power equals the irradiance times the area. And we know for a circle we know that the radius of the circle is 15 times 10 minus 3 metres. And we know that for the area of a circle we can easily work that out. It's going to be equal to pi r squared. So we've got the radius Therefore, we can easily square it. So we put in our numbers into our equation. P equals I I. P equals I A. That's going to equal to, in this case, 17 watts per meter squared. And you're going to multiply that by pi times the radius squared, which is going to be 15 times 10 to the minus 3, all squared. And that's going to be meter squared when you square uh, the area. So we multiply it in our calculators and we get a value of 0 0.012 and it's going to be the metres uh, per metre squared. It's going to cancel out the metre squared and you're left just simply the watts is really what we're looking for. So the power of that light source is going to be 0 0.012 watts. Question 8 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student investigates light from a sodium vapour lamp. Sodium vapour lamps emit yellow light. The light from the lamp is passed through a collimator and the collimator is used to produce a parallel beam of light. And now apparatus is set up in a darkened laboratory. So there you have the sodium vapour lamp and it's attached to a clamp stand. You have the collimator which is right up against the exit hole of the sodium vapour lamp. And that will collimate the light which means produce it into a sort of, kind of parallel beam for display on the screen. So let's slide down and see what the question is going to test us on. Part A says the parallel beam is shown onto the screen. The distance between the end of the collimator and the screen is 0 0.40 metres. And the beam produces a uniformly lit spot of radius 15 times 10 to minus 3 metres as shown. So you can see the, the spot of the light beam on the screen and you're given its radius there. Now question 8 part A will ask us in part I the irradiance of the spot of light on the screen is given as 17 watts per metre squared. And for 4 marks we have to determine the power of the beam of light. We we'll look up a relationship sheet and we know that the irradiance is going to be equal to the power of the light source divided by the area. If we cross multiply we can find out what the power is. Power equals the irradiance times the area. And we know for a circle, we know that the radius of the circle is 15 times 10 minus 3 metres. And we know that for the area of a circle we can easily work that out. It's going to be equal to pi r squared. So we've got the radius Therefore, we can easily square it. So we put in our numbers into our equation. P equals I I. P equals I A. That's going to equal to, in this case, 17 watts per metre squared. And you're going to multiply that by pi times the radius squared, which is going to be 15 times 10 to the minus 3, all squared. And that's going to be metre squared when you square uh, the area. 
So we multiply it in our calculators and we get a value of 0 0.012. And it's going to be the meters uh, per meter squared. It's going to cancel out the meters squared. And you will have just simply the watts is really what we're looking for. So the power of that light source is going to be 0 0.012 watts. Question 8 continued, part B. The student now looks at a beam of light through a spectroscope and views a bright yellow spectral line with a wavelength of 589 nanometers. The light is emitted when electrons make a transition from one energy level to another within the sodium atoms. And for one mark, state whether the electrons are moving to a higher or lower energy level when the light is emitted. Well, what's the situation we have in terms of energy level diagrams? You can see that the electron, in order to emit light, must go from the high energy level down to the low energy level. And then a photon of light is emitted with exactly the same energy as that energy gap. So because we're looking at the emission spectrum, if I can just draw it down here like that, there's the emission spectrum there. You can see that light has been produced. And that only can happen if an electron gives up its energy, going from a high to a lower energy state. So the answer for one mark is quite simply that the electron is moving from a high energy state to a low energy state and in doing so giving off a yellow photon of light. So question 8b part 2. Calculate the difference in energy between the two energy levels in the sodium atoms that produce this yellow light. So here we have the energy level diagram here and we have to work out this energy difference here which is going to be called delta E. That's the energy difference here. Now we know that delta E, the energy difference, has got to be equal to the photon HF, H being Planck's constant and F being the frequency of the photon. Now we're only given the wavelength of the of the actual photon so we have to change the wa the frequency into the wavelength in our calculation. And remember this equation here, delta E, the energy gap equal to HF of the photon can be rearranged into its sister equation knowing the fact that V equals F lambda. So we know that V equals F lambda and V really is the speed of light so we can change that to C equals F lambda. So we want to change the F in the energy equation. So we just rearrange this to give us the following. F is going to equal to the speed of light C divided by the wavelength. And we can then write down the sister equation regarding the energy. So delta E, the energy gap between the two energy levels, the energy difference, is going to equal to HF, which is going to equal to H times C all over lambda. So we have Planck's constant, we have the speed of light, and we have the wavelength. So we can just go ahead and work out the actual value in our, in our sum. So all we have to do is put in the values. The Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. I'll leave out units for the moment. Multiply by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8. We put a bracket around that. And when we divide by the wavelength, which has been given off uh, by the photon, it's going to be 589 nanometers. So we change it into 589 times 10 to the minus 9 of a meter. So we do that, we end up with the energy gap delta E is going to equal to 3.38, 3.38 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. We can put that to two, two significant figures by saying 3.4 times 10 to minus 19 joules. So the energy gap is going to be 3.4 times 10 to minus 19 joules. Question 8, part B continued, part 3. The student observes a second yellow spectral line at a wavelength of 589.6 nanometers. The student observes that the line at 589 nanometers is brighter than the line at 589.6 nanometers. So we've got to explain the student's observation. Well, the brighter line means, quite simply, there are going to be more photons given off per second. That's all that means. So if we imagine the energy level diagram to be like this, you can see for the 589 nanometer uh, light, you're going to get in a certain amount of time, maybe say three photons given off, one due to this transition, the second one, and the third one. 
But the corresponding line for the 589.6 nanometers, the longer wavelength one, which means the smallest energy of the photon, in a certain time, maybe that's only given off one photon. And that will mean that that light, uh, that spectral line is going to be dimmer, but there's going to be less photons given off. So the quick answer is the following, if you want to record this. A brighter spectral line means more electron transitions taking place per second. And that implies more photons given off per second from that transition. And that implies if there are more photons given off per second, it implies you're going to have a brighter line.